Good morning, Over LC Middle School students. This is Mr. Woolley. And remember, the information contained in this video is intended to be viewed only by the students in Mr. Woolley's classroom. By watching this video, you agree that you'll not record or share the video with anyone who's not a student in Mr. Woolley's classroom. All right, we are going to start off with Lesson 10 today. And Lesson 10's got a lot of stuff in it. We're going to split it up over two days. So this video will be, uh, have a lot of good material in it, and you'll be able to watch it um, for the first part of Lesson 10 and for the second part of Lesson 10 to go back over anything you need to see. So a lot of good things in it. All right, lesson 10, angle problems and solving equations. Our goal here today is you're gonna find certain relationships between angles and images, and you can build an equation to help solve to find missing angles. Now there's three ways that angles can be named. Or those up top, because it's not part of your regular Greek math stuff, but you need to know it. You could name it by the vertex. Now the vertex is right here at the point where the angle starts, where it shoots off with two rays, or there's an intersection of some type of lines. So I could call this angle A. That little angle symbol means angle, so angle A. Now, this is pretty much the best way you're going to be seeing these, though. So this is the important one. Name it by all three points. So this picture here, I could call it angle ABC or angle CBA. If you, all you're doing essentially is tracing the angle from A to B to C. Or, if you want it this way, C to B to A. Either way, they're the same thing. It's referring to the space right here in this angle. Now, notice how the B was in the middle of the three letters each time? Your vertex will always be the middle point. So you start, come down to the vertex, and go to the other ray. Or sometimes just name by the degree measure. Like say, oh, that measures 45 degree. People might call it a 45 degree angle. So, but for the most part, this is the one you're going to see it referred to as. All right, so here's how we're going to set up our equations. They're going to have some type of relationships, and here's our angle relationships we're going to look at. First up, adjacent angles. Adjacent angles share a side. They're next to each other, or like neighbors. So angle BAC and angle CAD are adjacent in this picture. So if I look at that, angle BAC and angle CAD. So this angle and this angle are adjacent. They're next to each other, and they share the side. They actually share this ray. AC. Vertical angles. They are formed by intersecting lines, and they form congruent or identical pairs of angles. For example, in this picture, angle DCF is equivalent to angle GCE. So I know they don't have the actual number in here for us. They have A degrees and B degrees. Those are the same measurement, whether they're 35 degrees or whatever, if they're 42 degrees, whatever. This measurement and this measurement will be the exact same. Vertical angles. Now, angles on a line, also known as supplementary angles. These are angle measurements that add up to 180 degrees. The angles form a straight line. So in this one, for example, if I see angle ABC and angle CBD, these two angles together add up to be a straight line. So this measurement of angle A is obtuse. This measurement of angle B is acute. Together, they have to add up to 180 degrees. So, for example, angle A, we'll just say, could be 120. Well, then angle B has to be 60, because 120 plus 60 gives you 180 degrees. Next up, angles at a point. All the angles combined form a circle. They essentially wrap all the way around. All angle measurements add up to 360 degrees. So, in this picture, angle CAB, angle BAD, and angle CAD all three of the angles, this angle, this angle, and this angle, all add up to 360 degrees. Now, there's one they didn't show us. I'm not sure why they didn't put this on here, but it's something you need to know. Referred to as complementary angles. These are angles that form a right angle, and they add up to 90 degrees. So, if this picture, angle ABC and angle CBD, add up to 90 degrees. And 90 degrees, a lot of times, is indicated by a box, a little box in a corner that officially tells you that something is going to be 90 degrees. So in this picture, we already knew they added up to 90 because there's that box there, but this angle here and this angle here have to add up to 90. So like, maybe this is like uh, 50 degrees, maybe this is 40 degrees. So 15, 40, make 90. All right, so how do we apply this types of, these types of knowledge? Well, there's a little warm-up here for you. Name the angles that are... Now, I'm not going over every single possible example from this image because there's lots of things going on in this image. But, for example, vertical angles. formed by They're identical angles formed by intersecting lines. So I said, hey, vertical angles, a good match of those, would be angle AEC 
So from A to E to C, so this angle right here, and angle B, E, D, B to E to D. And we can tell that they form intersecting lines because you can see there's like an X here, here, and you see 53 here, 53 here. Adjacent angles, there's lots of them here. I just went with uh, an easy one. Uh, angle C, E, F, and an angle F, E, B. So these two angles are right next to each other. You got lots of pairs that are next to each other here. So that's just an example. Angles on a line, um, there's lots of possibilities here too. Here's an example, A, E, C, C, E, F, and F, E, B. Notice how this is a straight line right here. I got one, two, three angles that make up that whole straight line. And angles at a point, well, that's just all the angles put together. If you actually took all these numbers and add them up, you're going to get 360 degrees. So angle at a point would be everything wrapping all the way around that center vertex. Okay. So what is the angle relationship in this problem? Well, this would be considered angles on a line or supplementary angles. The two measures have an angle of 180 degrees. So I've got this angle and this angle together make 180. So how do you figure that out? Well, since we already know that we got angles on a line or supplementary angles, we know it's going to be 180 degrees for a total. So all i got to do is take x plus 132 to equal 180. Take 132 away from each side, x is 48 degrees. Next up, in a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. We're not going to do complete sentences here. We'll get the point across to you. Now, I have one, two, three angles that form a straight line. And I know this measurement is actually 90 degrees because of that box. So how do I get that? 180 degrees. Well, my x's, I got 3x and 2x together, plus this 90. All three of them put together equals 180. So how do I actually solve that? Well, 3x and 2x gives you 5x. So if you collect like terms, you get 5x plus 90 equals 180. Get rid of the 90 from each side, and that's what 5x equals 90. And divide each side by 5, x equals 18. But you're not done yet because you're looking for 3x and you're looking for 2x. Because we're looking for the measurements of BAC, which is the 3x. So 3 times 18 gives you 54. And angle DAE, well, that's 2x. So 2 times your x answer is 36. So that's an important thing. Sometimes you're going to find just the x and that's it. Other times, once you find out what x is or whatever letter you're dealing with, Look back to the picture to see, do you need three times something? Do you need two times something? Because if you just put, if you just typed into school, you the 18 for your answer, it's going to be wrong because you actually need three times whatever the 18 is and two times 18. All right, next up, what's going on in this picture? Well, there's a couple things going on. If I'm trying to find the measurement of X and I'm trying to find the measurement of Y, well, right away, I, can, I know what this one is. Y is going to be 144 thanks to vertical angles. So these two match up because they're directly across from intersecting lines with each other. And then I'm also going to be able to figure out the other one, angles on a line. So if I take this, I want to find out X is. Well, i got a straight line right here. So really, X and the 144 gives me 180. So X plus 144 equals 180. And take away 144 from each side, X is 36. So there we go. Next up, number two, what's going on in this picture? All right, we're trying to find our angle relationship here. Well, we have angles that form vertical angles. And how's this work? Well, angle JEN, so this angle right here, and angle NEN, the small one right here, together, those two make a match for this one. If I, if I kind of, what I used to call unseeing line, if I cover up this line just a tiny bit, you can see there's like a perfect intersection of lines. So it's a perfect X shape. So that means that these two angles here and here are going to add up to this. So as I build that, 3X plus 16 equals 85, and divide, or subtract 16 from each side, uh, 3X equals 69, and then divide by 3 on each side, you get 23. Or in this case, since X is 23, times it back by 3 again, you get 69 degrees for your total. Next up, what's our relationship here? Well, I'm trying to find out what X is. I know this one, and I know this one. So together, it's angles at a point, because I'm going all the way around. So really, my X plus 90 plus 135 equals 360 degrees. Combine my numbers, I get 225. 
And if I take 225 away from each side, I got x equals 135. So my missing angle was 135 degrees. Next up, we got angles at a point here because I know this one, I know this one, I know this one. I don't know what x plus 1 is right here. So the angle G a h or h a g whatever you want to refer to it as all right so all together those would x plus one and then the 167 103 59 giving 360 we'll add up my one and then the other three numbers to get 330 take with 330 away from each side and i get x equals 30 however don't forget 30 was not where i finished because i'm looking for x plus one so the measure of that angle is 30 plus one which is 31. next up i have the following two lines intersect. The ratio of the measurements of the obtuse angle to the acute angle in any adjacent pair is 2 to 1. The complete sentence describes the angle relationships in this diagram. Well, I do got angles on a line, or I could think of it as angles at a point. Um, I'd rather go with the smaller one. So you're going to see that as you get through your examples and stuff. You try to pick the smaller. Why would I mess with 360 and why I can just use 180? I could just say, well, x and 2x together equal 180. So if I do that, x and 2x to make the 180, so x and 2x makes 3x equals 180, divide each side by 3, x is 60. So if that's the case, there's my x, that's a 60, and then 2 times x would give you your 120. So together those add up to 180. So there we go. All right, we're just about ready to keep on moving here. All right, I got one more example for you. All right, in this picture, I'm dealing with complementary angles. Why? Because really all there is is a 90 degree angle that I'm focused on. All right, and the 2x and the 3x make this 90 degree box. So 2x and 3x makes 90, so together that makes 5x. And then divide each side by 5, you get x equals 18. However, keep in mind that if you're looking for GFH, I need to take 2 times my x, so 2 times 18 gives me 36. And I need to take 3 times 18 to find my other angle because it's 3 times x. 3 times 18 is 54. If you want to double check, together your two answers should add up to 90, which they do. So, all right, now in Schoology, you'll find eight questions that will try to help you figure out the approach you're going to take to solve the problem. You're going to try to describe what angle relationship would work best to solve it. And then tomorrow, you actually use your, kind of your answers from uh, lesson 10's first part to kind of help build your equations for the second part and actually figure out the angles. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.